Life in Hungary in the 1930s was good. Family members shared pleasant moments and good conversation. There was laughter, joy and happiness as people celebrated their lives. Parties and trips to the beaches were common then, just as they are today. Attention was on the beauty of Budapest in the warm summer days. Still, Europe was at unease. Political deals were being forged and shattered. Betrayal was on the doorstep. People thought of their future and where they would be in another year. The comfort of warm days and close friends was coming to an end. The Jews of Budapest were at enormous risk and few were willing to raise a hand of courage. There were friends though, and as we look back at these days through the prism of time, several men stood out for their valor and commitment, for their own acceptance of risk to help those who committed no crime other than they happened to share a religious belief. Canada provided honor for those courageous souls. One man in particular, Roland de Cornet, firmly pushed ahead with his plan to posthumously recognize one man with the honor of Canadian citizenship. The person accepting this award on behalf of the man lived through the horror of the Shoah. He accepted the honor with humility, pride, and a sense of gratitude that such a man was present at the time. Our story is about those men. In 1934, a young Swedish student hitchhiked across the United States. In a letter to his grandfather, he explained traveling this way gave him an understanding of diplomacy and tact. In 1936, returning to Sweden with a U.S. college degree, he started work with a firm owned by Kalman Lauer. The student was Raoul Wallenberg. In 1938, the Hungarian government passed a series of laws fashioned after the German Nuremberg race laws. These laws inevitably led to the persecution of Jews in 1944 as the Nazi forces invaded Hungary, seizing power and control from Miklos Horthy. This humanitarian crisis received the attention of Franklin Roosevelt, who dispatched Ivor Olson to aid the Hungarian Jewish crisis. Olsen met Wallenberg and assigned him to a Swedish legation to Budapest. With assistance of fellow diplomat Per Anger, the two men established a plan to issue Schutzpass, identifying the bearer as a Swedish subject. These protective passports were the foundation for saving thousands of lives. This is a story of Raoul Wallenberg and Per Anger, as told by George Prager. It is an uplifting story in the face of overwhelming pain. It is a story, as told by Mr. Prager, of Canada's recognition of a young man who eventually gave his life in the midst of saving others he had never even met. He did not believe in murder. He did not believe in uh, killing people uh, because they belong to a certain ethnic group. The Holocaust has to be remembered forever. I think that humankind has still not learned, unfortunately. Uh, since then, we've had the killing fields of Cambodia, we've had Rwanda, we, now we have Syria. Uh, we have to be constantly reminded that acts of human kindness uh, are very, very important. An honorary Canadian citizenship is not undertaken lightly. There have only been five such honors given, the first being granted to Raoul Wallenberg in 1985. To receive such an honor posthumously is of great significance. To being the individual receiving it in honor of the recipient is deeply moving. George Prager was such a person receiving the award on behalf of Raoul Wallenberg. The Germans actually entered Hungary, I believe it was on March 17, 1944. Hungary was a German ally, but they wanted to uh, establish a separate peace with the Soviet Union. 
And that is why overnight they were uh, occupied by Germany. My father uh, was away from us a lot of the time. Uh, he was in Hungarian uniform. He was initially in a labor company as an officer. Uh, when that unit was sent to the Ukraine, he went AWOL, and then he resurfaced as a Hungarian officer with false papers, and he visited us from time to time. Uh, and I was the son on paper of my German governess, and my mom was uh, her half-sister on paper. And we were hiding in a village in Hungary as ethnic Germans. And I was a German speaker from the get-go, as was my mother, so we had the German language perfectly. Let me tell you, if I wouldn't have understood, I wouldn't be around in the first place. I had to understand, I was highly trained, and I highly trained myself. I knew the markings of every Russian soldier's or every German soldier's uniform, what unit they came from, what they did, what they didn't do, what to expect, what not to expect. I think that the whole Jewish community, in, in Budapest particularly, was very grateful uh, to Raoul Wallenberg and Sweden because they did provide essential food supplies uh, where otherwise many people would have starved to death. And just to give you an example, uh, in the book it's described that Per Anger himself was so hungry that he and members of the Swedish legation uh, helped to butcher a dead horse so that they would have some food to eat. All my relationship to Per Anger, I, I knew him well. Uh, and the reason for that was that at the time when he was Swedish ambassador to Ottawa, I happened to be the chairman of the board of the Swedish Canadian Chamber of Commerce. And he knew uh, that I was a Holocaust survivor from Hungary. Uh, he always undersold his own role. He was very, very modest. But I can tell you that there is a Holocaust memorial to him as a righteous Gentile right next to the memorial dedicated to Raoul Wallenberg himself. Raoul arrived in Hungary, it was on July the 9th, and visited the 76-year-old regent Admiral Horthy, the de facto Caudillo of Hungary, with a letter from King Gustav V of Sweden urging clemency for the Jewish people. Admiral Horthy was skeptical and somehow dismissed it. So the Swedish legation started issuing Schutzpasses, Schutzpässe. These were really forged passports uh, to the Jews and these passports were printed locally. Everything was done locally. It is amazing how, in how many cases these fictitious documents claiming the bearer to be a Swedish subject um, influenced the brutal, murderous Nazis. In the Battle of Budapest, Raoul Wallenberg was arrested by officers of the KGB, and we don't know if he was murdered or still in the Gulag. In conclusion, it has to be said that Raoul Wallenberg was perhaps the most righteous of Gentiles saving Hungarians, Jews, at great peril to himself. Per Anger worked very closely with Raoul Wallenberg throughout this episode in history, and that's why he knew very exactly what Raoul Wallenberg was doing. One of the greatest uh, deeds in the 20th century uh, to save a part of humankind uh, in the middle of terrible atrocities, not only perpetrated by Germany, but also by the Soviet Union. I was very humbled. I, I felt perhaps that there could have been worthier individuals uh, to receive this honor, but uh, per Anger insisted that I should be the individual, so I very humbly accepted the honor on behalf of Sweden.
Karl Lutz, the Swiss charge of fare. Angel Sands Breeze, called the Angel of Budapest. Chinu Sumihara of Japan, who saved 6,000 Jews in Kaunas, Lithuania. Salehatin Ulkemen of Turkey, who saved 700 Jews. Hiram Bingham IV, who saved and rescued 2,500 Jews in Marseille, France. And then there is a German diplomat who was actually a member of the Nazi establishment in Copenhagen, who alerted the Danish Jews and the underground that the Jews were going to be arrested and deported, as a result of which over 90% of Danish Jews were ferried across to Malmö in Sweden. a volunteer who hasn't been mentioned before, and he was a Czech immigrant organizing the Canadian stamp for Raoul Wallenberg. The Reverend was by birth Swiss. He was a member of parliament, I believe, by the Liberal Party, and he was very involved in multi-faith interaction between different groups of Canadians, and this was very important for him. Here in Canada, we are a compassionate and sharing society. May we never forget the lives of the six million men, women, and children who symbolize this day. They were demeaned, brutalized, tortured, and killed horribly en masse by human beings who committed these unspeakable crimes without any remorse whatsoever. Let us recall not only their death, but even more so the splendor of their lives. May the memory of their lives inspire us to hallow and sanctify our own lives and to help us ensure that they shall remember forever and ever. Amen be amen. As the daughter of a Hungarian survivor, whose home was next to the Swedish legation in Budapest, for me, in biblical Hebrew, Ruel is friend of God. Raoul accomplished his name.